Welcome to this presentation on linear functions by ordered pairs. This is going to work pretty much just, well actually it's going to work just like what we did with the uh, tables in a previous video or in class. The only difference is instead of having a table, they give it to us in ordered pairs. And what I would do is just take these ordered pairs and rewrite them as a table. So let's get started. Uh, that's your, this is what I do. I always go ahead and, even though I know which ones are my X's and Y's, I like to write on below it. And so now I've got my X. Put my Y here. So i got a 2, 5, 8, and 11. I don't need that line there, do I? Get rid of it. So now i got a 4, 3, 2, and a 1. First thing I do is just is is it a function? Because if it's not a function, there's no point of doing any sort of operations, right? We're just wasting our time. So let's just make sure it's a function. Do I have different x's? Yes. If you have different x's, different inputs, it's always going to be a function, no matter what. Because the definition of a function is each input has only one output. So each, if you got all unique or different inputs, there's no input that's repeating, so therefore there's not going to be any repeating outputs that we need to worry about. So if it's linear, it means it's got to have a constant rate of change, right? Or, you know, the average difference, you know, X and Y, they all have to be the same average distance apart, right? You sort of talked about this before. And what we mean here is like the difference between 2 and 5 is 3, right? difference between 5 and 8 is 3, and the difference between 8 and 3 is 3. The difference between 4 and 3 would be a negative 1, because 4 plus negative 1 is 3. 3 plus a negative 1 is 2. 2 plus a negative 1 is a 1, right? So let's see. You got all 3's over here. You got all negative 1's over here. Since they're all the same number, there's no more thinking that we have to do, right? So, so we know this is a linear function. So we're good. Right, let's check out our next one. We've got, got our x's and y's, right? Go ahead. You know, and all this doing is just when you write down that x and y underneath it, it just keeps you from making a careless mistake. Negative 10. Negative 5, 0, and 5, right? Got all my lines here. So I got 10. We got 4, 2, and 0, right? So these are, you know, add 5 right to each of those. So that's it's looking good. Looking good. Those are all 5 apart. There, that's 6. It's falling apart here from 4 to 2 is 2. These are, those are okay, but that kind of screws things up, right? So this is not linear. That 6 just kind of messes it up. So it's not linear. A couple more examples here. Is this linear? I don't know, but we got, notice we've got all the same inputs, right? we got the same X's, but we keep getting different Y's, so this is not a function. Yeah, this would be a vertical line. If you're going to graph this, 1, 2, all right, that's 1, that's 2, it would be a vertical line going this way. Remember, vertical lines, they fail the vertical line test because, you know, if we put a vertical line over here, it would touch at every single point, which would be more than one point. So it's not a vertical line. So this is not a function. It happens to be a vertical line. Our last one here is, is it, it looks, got different X's, right? Different X's means it's always going to be a function. So let's figure it out. We can go ahead and draw my table. X. I also got negative 5, negative 1, 3, 7, 
and an 11 down there. So now I got one. One, one. Got all ones, don't I? Okay, so um, constant difference there is zero. Here, the difference is going to be four, right? The difference is four. The difference is four. The difference is four. So, yes, this is linear. If you to graph it, it's one, right? It would be a horizontal line that passes the vertical line test. Now, what if, um, this one's kind of interesting. What if that was a 12? Well, that would still be a 1, right? But your distance here would have been a 1. You know, because from 11 to 12 was 1, right? Now, you know, when we talked earlier about the constant rate of change, you know, that's okay because there's four spots between 7 and 11, right? Like you have 7, that's 1, right? 8 would have been 1. 9 would have been 1. 10's 1, 11's 1, and then, you know, of course, 12 is 1. So, you know, you can take, you know, these numbers here, right? You could have put them all in there and still everything would have worked. Because from 7 to 4, that's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 spots, right? So, sometimes you may have to dig a little bit deeper into the table or to the problem, maybe graph. But um, just, just remember... It's, you know, it's just got to be constant, right? And, you know, it doesn't hurt. It's nothing wrong with drawing this graph like we did. Go ahead, graph it. You know, how long did it, it only took a second to draw that graph, right? I mean, spend that extra 30 seconds to a minute ensuring that you've got it right. But remember, when you're doing ordered, when you're trying to identify a linear function by using an ordered pair to convert it to a table, and just remember that, in your functions, there's a constant change in x that corresponds to a constant change of y. So uh, good luck with it.